So we come on today, and Lord, we say, and let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight, God. We're saying on today, Lord God, that that is all that is within us. We choose to bless your name. Glory to God. Lord, with all that is in us, we choose to give you the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With all that is within us, oh God. David said, if I had 10,000 tongues, it still is not enough just to give you the praise for you're so worthy of it, Lord God. When we look back over our lives, God, we just think about, hallelujah, where you brought us from, God. We just had to give you praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. So we come into Thank this you, sanctuary on this day, God, Thank to do you. just Thank that. You. Hallelujah. We surrender ourselves unto you, God. We present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. Yes, Lord, we're not going to be conformed to this world, but we're going to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, so hallelujah. Let this mind be in us. Hallelujah. That hallelujah. was in Christ Jesus. Yes. And Lord God, we think of ourselves, God, as servants, hallelujah, lowly, not exalting ourselves up. But Lord, we know that you are the one that will exalt us in due season. But you're the one that sees us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And so we give you the praise, hallelujah, for all that you are in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Oh, his holy name. Oh, I bless the Lord. 
I we believe. can tell you about this word. Glory to God. <laughs> we can tell you about this joy. Yes, but Lord. if you don't taste and see that the Lord is good, yes, hallelujah, Lord. you will not eat of the tree of life. Glory to God. That's Thank the you. word. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God.
God, no flesh, but God, that mm. you get the glory yes. out of all. Thank Lord God, you. so you said not to add mm. one jot or one till unto your word, God. Amen. So Lord God, we're not going to add to it and we're definitely not going to take away from it. Oh God, with the help of you, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Truly, we love to praise his name. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we have been talking this, uh, we started last Sunday on another series, and we started it out with the gospel truth. And when we talked about the gospel truth, we were sharing that uh, oftentimes as we've been raised up, that we would hear sayings of wisdom by our older folks, and they wouldn't say that, well, it comes out of Mark, it comes out of Matthew, it comes out of Proverbs, they would just tell you the same. And then you just had to grab it whichever way you could. Amen. And so by and by, we got a better understanding of what they meant. Glory to God. We got a better understanding because they told us just keep on living. <laughs> and we'll get us a better understanding yeah, of it. Amen. Bye. And so on uh, Thursday night, we talked concerning that you don't know who is who. That's what the old folk used to tell us. You don't know who is who. So you wouldn't talk about people because you don't know who's kin to who. You don't know who's the person that can have something in there uh, that's a blessing that is in store for you even. Mm -hmm. So you had to make sure that when you were getting your act together, mm -hmm. that you made sure you treated everybody right. Yeah, amen. You had to treat everybody, everybody right. Because, amen, you didn't know on your way up mm -hmm. who you were going to meet on your way back down. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And so as we talked about that, we came to the point where it was the, the example that Jesus was giving because he was invited to a feast with the Pharisees there. And as he was invited to this feast, we found that uh, they were looking at him because he healed a man on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. This man had dropsy. And they didn't have anything verbally to say, but their hearts were talking concerning this. And so Jesus basically was like, hey, y'all, whoever doesn't go and pull your own uh, ox out of the ditch, if you find them there on the Sabbath day, then you got something to say about me healing this man and on the Sabbath day. But then he went, because he noticed how the men were then going and trying to sit at the head of the table, fighting to get this, the head seat at the table. And so he gave the example about, hey, when you come to a feast or a wedding, you don't seat the head table, even if you are an invited guest. Don't think that you you don't think of yourself as a big eye and everybody else is a little you. Like you deserve the head seat. What you need to do is come in and sit at the lower seat, knowing that you were invited in, knowing that you have a relationship with the person who has um, hosted the feast. And then when they come in, allow them to say, "Hey, Johnny, I need you to move back over here a minute because um I need you uh, let my friend here sit a little closer." And so we said that that comes now from a saying where we, they let us know, you don't know who is who. So the main person that you call yourself looking over may be the person that has the blessing in their mouth for you. And in this case, we saw through many examples on Thursday that that is what happened. That when the woman came that wiped Jesus' feet, washed his feet with her tears, and that she anointed his feet, that he gave her more of a position and said that she'll be remembered forever. Mm -hmm. While the men were looking at him like, you let this woman touch you? But they didn't know who was who. They didn't know her heart was more toward God. Because Jesus rebuked them and said, hey, Simon, Peter, when I came in your house as an invited guest, you didn't wash my feet. You didn't have your servants to wash my feet. But this woman had more sense of how to love me than you did. And we, and we gave many other examples on Thursday night that you can go and watch the Thursday night on Sherwood Fellowship to see. So on today, as we're going forward, the saying that we're going to is the old folks used to say, I can show you better than I can tell you. Mm -hmm. And we know what happened with that because we were young. Mm -hmm. And as being young, we always thought that we had a better idea of how things should go than what our parents did. So when we had several generations of us, you know, think about it. If you had three generations of people um, alive in your family, that the wisdom that they were giving us on, hey, when you go outside and it's wet in the morning time, you need to put some shoes on your feet. Mm -hmm. 
we were like, they, they don't know what they're talking about. But then when we found out, when we started going to school, that there are parasites that can go up through your feet. And those parasites, they travel around at, you know, at night when the dirt is, earth is cool is when they come up. We got some sense when you had to go to the doctor concerning something wrong with your body. Then they also used to tell us about how when you have a baby, how you don't, um, during the months all the way until March, I believe it was, that you need to put an extra t-shirt on them. And even for us, they told us to wear a little t-shirt under your shirt. And you'd be like, oh, it's hot outside. It was still pneumonia weather. It was still flu weather. And they would always say, we're. and so, you know what, as we got older you, and, and the sickness hit your body, I know I used to, you know, my dad would tell us when you be riding along that don't just hold your arm out in the, out of the window where the air just goes around your arm because later on you can get arthritis in that shoulder. But then, you know, we was like, we enjoyed hanging out. We just enjoyed hanging out. But then when it came down to it, we had needed to, um, we had needed to figure out that, you know what, that draft coming down on our shoulder, that draft coming on our elbow, they could, you know, I can show you better than I can tell you, you wasn't listening to me when I was talking. <laughs> but when it hit you, right. you thought about that thing. So truly, it showed us better than they could tell us. And so we're going to this scripture here where it's about how uh, Paul, excuse me, where we're talking in here in Corinthians, and Paul is talking about, hey, you know, people are wondering who I am and what it is I do, and, you know, everybody wants to see degrees. They want to know who you studied from and, and what is this and what is that. But I can tell you on today that when I received Christ, it wasn't because of some exemplary teaching. Amen. It was because I saw the power demonstrated. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, those that have your notes here with you. It says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration mm -hmm. of the spirit Ooh. and of power. Come on now. And the reason for that is verse number five of 2 Corinthians chapter one. Excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He says, the reason in verse 5 is that your faith should not be in wisdom of man, but in the power of God. And this is key for all of us. I don't care how much a doctor with a PhD comes and says this, that, and the other. The demonstration of whether this can do you any good is what makes the difference. Come on now. You can tell me, I know I've been to the doctor and they wanted to give me a medicine for this and a medicine for that. And if I take it for two days and it didn't do me anything, honey, you need to go back and look at You definitely are practicing medicine. And I don't care how wonderful they can talk because, you know, I've had folks that have stood before me and I, and I share this, like especially when you're talking about working on a car. Oh, I know what it is. It's this, it's that, it's the other. It's the, oh, that, that, that. And they talk a good game. Mm -hmm. But if I want, I want to see my car fixed. Come on, <laughs> Thank you. So they don't, they don't, I, you don't need to show me where you have all these degrees from diesel mechanic and ASE school. If my car was broke down and now it's riding, you show me better than that one over there with all them certificates on their wall. Amen. And even so, I don't care how much you say you've been in the church, Come on. how much words you know, if you can't love me, wait a minute, I don't even have to go to love. If you can't speak Come on, to me, I can show you better than I can tell you. And so even on today,
today, men are looking for the power of God. We, I tell you, when we think about this coronavirus and how it really has set off things in the United States and across the world, it is making people pray that there is somebody out there that can heal. And we know our God as a healer. Mm -hmm. It's making folk pray mm -hmm. that didn't used to open their mouth. Mm -hmm. And they're calling out for a quote-unquote higher power. <laughs> and then it's up for us <laughs> to show them better than we can tell them that that is Christ. Amen. Amen. By them seeing it operating in our lives. Amen. And so this is what Paul was saying. He said, all of y'all out here that say that you're the Pharisees and the Sadducees and you're the scribes and you have all of this. Yeah, I used to boast in those things. But then I found I wasn't no power in it. The power was in me preaching about Jesus Christ. The one that went to the cross. Died for my sins. The one that went down into hell, took the keys of hell, death, and the grave came back up saying all power is in my hand and that's the one that whose resurrection power that Paul wants to talk about because he said I can show you better than I can tell you yes we know even back to the time of Moses they had magicians and remember that when Moses threw down his rod and it turned into a serpent that the other magicians those witchcraft workers they threw down their rods too. And did they what? What did the they rods turned do? Into surface. Turned into serpents too. But Moses had to say, I can show you better than I can tell you. Because his rod went and ate up their rods. And so we've got to be able to have enough faith to believe God for the things that we need happening in our lives. So that then when it comes time to meet somebody else who's going through. We can tell them how we made it over because they'll see the demonstration that we don't look like what we've been. And the key right there was we went through. Come on. When we say he's able, he's able, he's able to carry you through. Truly, that's one of them songs. You know, I hadn't done that one yet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But he's able to carry us through. You know, there was a time when we when we wanted to try to skip over stuff. We wanted to try to make it look like we were a bag of chips and all of that. And the old folk used to tell us something. He's, the old folk used to say you got to crawl. Somebody know that one? Mm -hmm. You got to crawl before you can walk. You got to crawl before you can walk. Now that, we saw it in the natural sense what they were talking about. Because if a baby starts walking before they start crawling, it has been proven. And I didn't have to say scientifically. It has been proven because it showed us better than, than we could understand it by people telling us. If a baby does not crawl first and he starts walking, when that child turns three years old, what are they going to do? go back and start crawling again. Wow. They'll start crawling because they skipped the step. And we've got to realize that in our lives that we've got to go from faith to faith. From glory to glory. From faith to faith. From glory to glory. Because if we skip a step, when that right test come, guess what we're going to do? Oh, get down on our knees. <laughs> And we're going to be crawling. We're going to be crawling. Y'all, we're going to be crawling. Oh, God. Oh. Acting like this thing done tore us up. And they're going to be looking at us like, what the hell are you? Surely, if he brought you through all of that you say he brought you through, you ought to be able to stand this. But somewhere we skip the step because mama prayed us through, daddy prayed us through, auntie prayed us through, and we didn't pray ourselves. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on here. Come on so now we've got to understand then that sometimes it's going to take that. When they sing that song, Trouble in My Way, I got to cry sometimes. Yeah, yeah I got to keep on pressing on because I got to know that Jesus will fix it. Amen. I, got, I, got, I got to know. 
you got to know for yourself. You got, you sure enough got to know for yourself that Jesus will fix it. Amen. So, we got to do this one. When the enemy comes up, and he's like, oh, you ain't going to be able to stand. I'm going to show you better not to tell you. <laughs> I'm going to show you, devil, better not to tell you that I'm going to stand. And I'm going to stand, therefore, in the liberty with which God has made me free. You know, we have a, a thing, too, that when we, we use that, there's a scripture in Proverbs chapter 3. And it's verses 27 through, um, and it starts out with 27, saying, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. When it is in your power mm -hmm. Come on. that you can do it. That's right. Don't withhold doing good to somebody. Amen. Today, when it's in your power to do it. The word goes on to say, don't tell them. Don't tell your neighbor, go and come back tomorrow. <laughs> and I'll give it to you. When you know you had it right then, what was you waiting on? What you wanted them to suffer a little bit longer? You wanted them to beg a little bit longer? To ask you a little bit longer? When you had it within your power to do? Now, I could see if, you, if I said, hey, you know, I need $50 to uh, help me out on my car payment this month. And you say, well, hey, I don't, I have it to get. Now, if you're going to hold it over my neck and try to choke me, you better say you don't have it. But if you, if you have it to give, then you do it as soon as you can. If you can go today and get it, get it today. Even though they say, I need it by tomorrow. If you can do it today, do it today. Because now it's letting us know here that this is a wise teaching. Some of us may not have known that it was in the Bible to not withhold the good that you can do today for tomorrow. But let me tell you how it plays out for us. It didn't have to be money. It, had, it could have been the Holy Spirit whispering to you saying, call mother so-and-so. And you say, well, oh, I'll call her tomorrow. I'm talking about me now. Call mother so-and-so. And I held off doing it that day. And when I held off doing it that day, you don't know, mother could have had something up on the top cabinet in her, in her shelf. That's right. That she, well, she might have had some black eyed pea cans up there, or the bag of black eyed peas up there, and she couldn't get it. You didn't want her to climb up on a stool trying to reach it. But if you would have just called. And then she end up, you end up finding out mother in the hospital. And she said, yeah. I just sure had me a taste for them black eyed peas. And now I fell and broke my hip because I was trying to get it. When your call could have been not withholding the good that you could do today. Could have been something as simple as just calling because somebody was crying because they were missing a loved one who's going on. All of us have that going on. And all you had to do was just call and say, I'm thinking about you, I love you, and the reason why I'm thinking about you is not because of me, but because the God in me had his mind on you. And so he used me to be the tongue to give you the call. He used my hands to be the ones to wrap around you and give you a hug that really came from the Lord and not from me. Paul said, I didn't come preaching an excellency that you would know that I know Greek and Hebrew and Latin. He said, I came preaching Christ and I came pre preaching it in simplicity because I wanted you to know the wisdom of God. That he loves you so much that he would call somebody that lives across town to call you just to make sure you know that you're on his mind. Don't withhold the good that you can do today for tomorrow. And the last example that we're going to talk about, 
when it comes to I can show you better than I can tell you. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And it says, are we beginning, and I'm reading from the Living Bible here, as you'll find in your notes. Are we beginning to be like those false teachers of yours who must tell you all about yourselves and bring long letters of commendation with them? I think you hardly need someone's letter to tell you about us, do you? And we don't need a recommendation from you either. I don't need you to approve me. So when it comes time that you need to do good, you don't need to double guess yourself. Well, why, you know, I don't have, I got, I'm going to drive up to their house in a raggedy car. Um, look like if I go and I just come to their house to, to check on them and see what they need, and I go in there and mother dish is not washed, I go over and see brother so-and-so, and I see that the yard need mowing, my yard need mowing too. If it's in your power to mow their yard, don't put yourself above others. God lets us know in the word that when we exalt others higher than ourselves, now I'm not talking about being crazy and every time you turn around, you do it for others before you do for your own house. But there will be times that you will need to do for others to show the love of Christ because you are on a mission. He says, the only letter I need is you yourself. By looking at the good change in your hearts, everyone can see that we have done a good work among you. They can see that you are a letter from Christ, written by us. It is not a letter written with pen and ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. Not one carved on stone, but in human hearts. And we're going to keep reading. We dare to say these good things about ourselves only because of our great trust in God through Christ, that he will help us to be true to what we say. Verse 5, and not because we think we can do anything of lasting value by ourselves. Our only power and success comes from God. He is the one who has helped us tell others about his new agreement to save them. We do not tell them that they must obey every law. Come on now, we're going we to stop there a minute. We're going to read this. We do not tell them that we must obey every law of God or die. But we tell them there is life for them from the Holy Spirit. The old way, trying to be saved by keeping the Ten Commandments, ends in death. In the new way, the Holy Spirit gives them life. So when you go to folks and they got all these extras, all these extras, I'm sitting up here, they got more doctor degrees and ain't healed nobody. <laughs> you can be down and the word that they give can't even lift you up. That's because they're coming in themselves. But if I ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, how do I reach this one? Because the gospel will make you free Amen. if you want to be free. Yes. So when it tells us to train up a child in the way she, they should go, that when they grow old, they do not depart far from it, we need to show them better than we tell them about loving God. We need to show them by being the Bible that they see that we really love God. Because if you love him, you ought to show some sign. I know if I walk in a room and I see, you know, a little couple sitting there, and, you know, they kind of, you know, liking on each other, they don't have to open their mouth. You can tell by a certain, can you tell? You can tell, oh, that's why, mama, you bring them home, you ain't got to say, well, this my girlfriend, this my, you know, they just look like they can smell it on you. <laughs> And they go, mm hmm. Yeah, you like that one right there, don't you? And you trying to lie. Oh, they just a friend. Oh, we just, we just friends. No, I don't care how much friend you are. You like that one. 
Yeah, you got this one is your friend, that one's your friend. But there's something different about that one. And so if we have Christ in us, amen, we can, we can like cars, we can like houses, we can like jewelry, we can like clothes. But it's something different when you like that one. You don't have to go around saying nothing. Your life, how you act when you get in the presence, of the whole Something gonna tell on you. Yes, right. Amen. You ain't gonna be able to hold your peace. And so we're encouraged on the day to make sure that we live a life that can show people that we love God. Amen. That can show people the way to holiness. Amen. Show people the way of righteousness. And show people the way of truth better than us clapping our tongue. So, Father, we pray on this day that, Lord, our life show them better than we tell them. Lord, that they see by demonstration in our life that we have a light that shines before men. That they see our good works and glorify the Father in heaven. So we pray, Father, that it's more of you and less of us. That we put on Christ and be clothed with Christ. That our lives be hidden so much so in you that not even the enemy can find us. But Lord, that we line up with you so much that we are one. Just as you and the Father are one. One in love one in service, that we say, yes, Lord, we will obey. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. amen. That's worth a clap right now. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. To affirm that, that we want to be just like Jesus in our heart. Yes, Lord. Amen. amen. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. to be a Christian in your heart. And this flesh keeps warring against the Spirit of God that wants to come into you. So we're asking you to just make a decision and then allow God to do the work. And he'll cause you to love everybody in your heart. Because that word will saturate. That word will penetrate. That word will cleanse, and that word will do it in your heart. And your heart is that mindset. That heart is where you believe, hallelujah, unto salvation. And you confess with your mouth, and it is accounted unto you as righteousness in your heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus. Lord, I want to be like Jesus. Lord, I want to be like Jesus. In my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Oh, yes. 
Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That is you, you, and you. And you confess Jesus Christ. You believe that Jesus rose from the dead for your sins. And that he's gone away to the Father. Carrying that blood. And that you're cleansed by that blood. You are saved. Confess it to somebody on this day and allow God to continue to strengthen you and to continue to strengthen your walk. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're preparing ourselves now, amen, as we are praying. And of course, we've done many prayers, but we're going to pray a special prayer on today because we're going to observe the Lord's Supper. And the Lord's Supper is a time where we're realizing what Paul said here. He said, we cannot be so perfect and say that we obey every law of God, that we obey the Ten Commandments, and that's how we're getting into heaven. But we're saying that when I obey the law of faith, when I obey the law of faith, that is what gets me into glory. And that glory is what we experience right here on earth. And so, Father, we repent before you now, God. For we realize that it's not our perfection. It's the blood that washes. It's the yes. blood that cleanses. It's the blood that carries us from this level of God to the next level. And so, Lord, we choose to forgive any person that has done us wrong. And, Lord God, we release them and we let them go. Father, we owe no man nothing but to love them. For we're not going to hold it to their charge. For we know that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But it's the enemy that works through them to affect us. And Lord, it's even our own hearts that deceive us. But Lord, when you told us not to do it and we did it, and Lord God, it causes us to be placed into a trap, God. It causes us to be placed in a place of, uh, that is uncomfortable for us. Lord God, it wasn't their fault. It was our fault for being disobedient. Yes. And so Lord God, we repent yes. of those things now. And Lord God, we come before you as a righteous judge and a righteous father. And we thank you for the forgiveness of sins that we have through you. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank amen. God. I'm going to amen. do this one. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for these elements that have been got prepared for God consumption. For you said, and as often as we do this, that you do show forth the death, yes. burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord God, we come together on this day to observe, oh God, the breaking of bread. Father, we come, oh God, together to observe the drinking of the wine, Father, because, oh God, that is the life for your blood that was shed for us, oh God. We thank you for this grape juice, God, that is unfermented because there was no sin found in you. We thank you for this bread, God, that has no yeast and no rise in it because there was no sin found in you. And Lord God, we thank you for it, and we thank you for the blessing that comes from you. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, the blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, the blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, the blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood, don't sign my name. I can feel it. I can feel it. The blood don't sign my name. I can feel it. I can feel it. The blood don't sign my name. I can feel it. I can feel it. The blood don't sign my name. Oh, the, the blood, blood does sign my name. Hallelujah. This was during the time of the Passover when Jesus was uh, celebrating the Jewish festival that said that when they saw the blood, death passed over. And this during this 10-day celebration, Jesus knew that he would be crucified. And so he uh, broke, he ate with the disciples. And after he ate with them, he took the bread and he blessed it, and he broke it. And so we bless, amen. Thank you, Lord God. Amen, hallelujah. The breaking of the bread, 
Hallelujah. Then Jesus said, this is my body that was broken for you. Eat all of it. And in like manner, he took the cup uh, that he knew of his suffering. He took the cup that was his blood that would present us faultless before the Lord, before God with exceeding joy. He took the cup knowing that it was his blood that provided healing, that provided deliverance. And he said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Drink all of it. Hallelujah. And as we drink of his blood and we eat of his body, we do show forth the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ until he shall come again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We do observe the washing of the feet. Amen. We do that quarterly. And so on the next time we go, amen, we will wash feet. But we thank God, hallelujah, for the blessing that the Lord has given unto us, that we are in him. And this keeps us mindful, amen, of the fact that it's not our righteousness, but it's the righteousness of Christ that is in us. Hallelujah. So hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the blood does sign my name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The blood done sign my name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood done sign my name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God for the fellowship of you, you, and you being here with us. Amen. As we prepare ourselves now. Amen. For our giving, glory to God. We thank God for what he has done unto us. We thank God that as tithers, he rebukes the devour for our sake. As tithers, amen, that he, amen, is the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies, the fighting God. And he wars on our behalf. We thank him that even in our giving, that God, that is you have declared unto us, God, that men will call us a delightsome land, that we are a delightsome land before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that there is no want to them who fear you. And Lord God, as we give unto the Lord, hallelujah, Lord God, you're the one who does give unto us, God. What shall we render and what shall we give, God? We give unto you and we know, Father, that you are the God of multiplication, Hallelujah. And you are continuing to bless us, oh God, and to shower down on us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that you love a cheerful giver. And that you love it on us for giving, oh God, cheerfully. We don't do it out of compulsion. We're not saying, oh Lord God, I'm giving you this because I need my rent paid. I'm giving you this because I need my car done. Lord, I give it to you because I love you. And I love you so because you first loved me. Yes, dear. And we give you the praise, honor, and glory for it. Hallelujah. We declare that we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are the lender and not the bar. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. Glory unto God. We're blessed in our going out and we're blessed in our coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. We sow into good ground and we know that it is producing a harvest. A harvest unto us and a harvest unto our seed seed. But Lord God, you said that when we sow, that seed falls in the ground. Hallelujah. And Lord God, when that seed fell in the ground, God, it produced a tree, a tree of righteousness for us. And Lord, our family, our children's children are eating the fruit thereof. Thank you, Lord God, for that ability, oh God, to go forth in faith in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you for it. Hallelujah. Amen. And our giving. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So Father... As we prepare, as we are, uh, amen, giving unto the Lord, hallelujah, it's the SW, the dollar sign, SWF 1500, SWF 1500 is for sure, Word Fellowship 1500 on Cash App, it is the, amen, Sure Work Fellowship at gmail.com for PayPal. It is good old-fashioned cash. Amen. Good old-fashioned checks. All those things that can be made out to SWF. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we're excited about what he is doing in the midst of us. Glory to God. I'm just excited when I get my opportunity to give Amen. unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We see the work that he's done and how it is counted unto us. Amen. We know how. Amen. We hear throughout. The, the scriptures of how the, they held on, even the church of Macedonia, it wasn't because they were rich, but it was because they were rich in the things of God. They Amen. were rich in wanting to be it to be accounted unto them.
for amen, the work that they did toward the kingdom. So maybe I can't go amen, and, and be the person to go and take care of a deacon so-and-so who needs to have his yard mowed, but I can give the money that somebody else can go and put the, that can put the gas in it, amen. amen, and still it worked out to my account. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we want to align ourselves in the right way, amen, in the manner that God have us amen. to do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, our amen, as we are doing that, amen, we've already blessed the offering. You can just give, amen, hallelujah, just like hallelujah, how God says to give, glory to God. Come and bring an offering and give him the glory that is due unto his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. All righty. Amen. It's just a blessing to be able to do what we do. Hallelujah. Amen. It's just a blessing to be able to do what we are called to do. And so, you know, of course, we have a, we've done, we've done some little songs. Amen. So I'm just going to give the announcements for today. Know that on third Saturdays at three. So we have a third Saturday that is coming up on next Saturday. Third Saturday at 3 is our foundation Bible training where we come here on that Saturday for one hour for just uh, knowing how to study the Word of God. We make studying the Word of God fun. You're welcome to come out. Join us also on Facebook Live for that. And then we also still continue with our Monday nights, amen, with that teaching. Um, God has been, a, has been a blessing unto us, and we do our Thursdays. Glory to God. And I just believe we're going to do a couple little things differently as God is moving us forward in March. Um, every morning, we still do our good old-fashioned prayer, man. Thank the Lord for what he's doing in the midst of us. Thank you all for supporting us in the midst of that also. Share it with someone because we never know what song it is that somebody needs to hear to encourage them on that day. And so you can minister to them, amen, by having them hear somebody sound like a goat on a tin roof. It might just give them a good laugh that morning. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hear that afternoon. Amen. Yes. I didn't say I hit the right note. But we hit something. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 It might have been a tin can and it might have been a symbol every now and again. But we do it to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Till we meet. Till we meet. Till we meet. Yeah, Jesus. Till we meet. Till we meet. prosperity within your palaces as we send you out blessed, we send you out healed, we send you out whole with your mind stayed on Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.